Mm, yeah. Again, so, again, the zero sum thinking of some African Americans weren't uh, weren't able to be uh, Mormons in good standing until sometime in the late 20th century. <laughs> yeah, just not too long ago. Yeah. You know, like I said, they've changed because of social pressure before, and they'll change again. <laughs> that's right. That's right. We got to put the political pressure up. Okay, just to finish out on the uh, the <clears throat> pro prop eight arguments. Parenting concerns, same-sex marriages potentially could deprive children of either a father or a mother, assuming that you need both to be a, a healthy uh, child. That's a that's a, a large assumption. <clears throat> you need to have someone to teach you gender roles, uh, and not bias you one way or the other. But uh, obviously, some parents are better than no parents, and especially loving parents are better than no matter what gendered parents who are not loving parents. So that's usually the criteria which uh, an adoption agencies. And someone brought up earlier that what about what about church um, sponsored adoption or orphanages? Would they have the right to deny <clears throat> gay parents to adopt a child who uh, is in a, a religious orphanage? I, think they should be. I don't know that. I think they should be. I know it's counterproductive. I know it's counterproductive, but I think they should be. If they have if they have legal guardianship over those children, then yeah. that's up to the church. Because, I mean, we're, the, 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 the funny thing guardian. about the gay rights community is that we're the Gestapo and you know we're fascists and all this. But you know something, most of the of the you know gay, lesbian, bigender, transsexual, bisexual people that I know don't want to dictate to the church any more than they want the church dictating to them. Yeah. So I'm not going to sit here. I don't think Bo is either, and say that the church can't do what they want with with the guardianships of the children that are in their care. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you know, it's 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 a double-edged sword. Yeah, as long as they have legal guardianship for right. the child, they're responsible for that child. Right. Anything that goes wrong, it's on their heads. To argue otherwise is to is just to argue is to undermine the entire guardianship system to begin with. I mean, it's it's, you know, it, it can't go that way. Right, so take the decision away from the people who know the children best. And, and you don't want to do that, yourself. even if it's the Mormons. Yeah. You don't want to do that. Right. Okay, and again, uh, religious and tradition, traditional grounds, exposure to immoral gay lifestyle and practices, uh, in quotes, immoral gay lifestyle and practices, as, as if just knowing about it would, would obviously... As if heterosexual people, or gay people are any more likely to have sex in front of their children than heterosexual people are. <laughs> I mean, yeah, because we're all exhibitionists in front of our kids. <laughs> Yeah, I heard a cool over there. <laughs> wow. I'm going to grab my video camera. All right. All right. Now, and and uh, something we talked about earlier, uh, undermining of traditional gender roles in public education in in the sense of uh, in public education there are in, in every, guidelines, you know, yeah. uh, depictions That's, of... Uh, it's a non sequitur. Yeah, it's, it's uh, the facts of life are such. There are some people who behave certain ways and some people behave others. Right. Uh, you know, if you're going to have a public education, you're going to treat the facts as facts. You're not I don't want pushing one thing or another. Yeah, I don't want the school teaching my children that there are gay marriages any more than I want them teaching him that that they're immoral. Again, I think the schools need to stay out of it too. I mean, I, I would I would hate to be in a world where, um, you know, my school disrespects me because of my relationships, and they take that out on my child. I mean, that that's not his, that's not his issue. Right, right. It's not the child's fault. Yeah. Well, it's also quite ironic with the uh, school system, which deals with children from broken homes and abdicates any responsibility by saying, "Well, it's the parents sh should be doing this. Uh, we're not here to be your babysitters and, you know, uh, give them this." But then on this issue, they want to say, but we need to teach them all these other things. So it, it is quite hypocritical of the system. But this is also because those in power, legislators, have created the system. They've set the rules, and you know what happens. If you are the one who makes the rules, you make them to be most advantageous to your philosophy. So in some respects, this is an issue that is ripe for the legislature to get it out of their hands. Yeah. yeah. And of course, this begins to bump up on another uh, area altogether. And that is school choice. 
<laughs> you see, as long as we're as long as we're talking about uh, tax funded schools, yes, everybody's going to have to be treated equally. You know, that's that's just the way it is. Mormons ought to be opening private Mormon schools for Mormon kids, you know, and Mormon teachers. Yeah. That's yeah. really what where they should be putting their money. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll tell them so. <laughs> but every, everybody else, yeah, everybody else ought to be putting their money there too, because uh, because tax funded education means that you're going to get lowest common denominator education and values and everything, mm -hmm. and and they're going to be dictated by our government. And until we get libertarians running the show, we probably don't want that, do we? <laughs> of course, right. when we get libertarians running the show, we're not going to have tax-funded schools. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, I'll be private. <clears throat> okay, let's now. We've already covered a lot of these questions, so I'm going to kind of accelerate through things we've already discussed. Basically, the Prop 8 background, the, 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 the question on the table is why did Prop 8 win? The background was that Prop 8 changed the California Constitution to, uh, uh, to add a provision which says only, a, only marriage between a man and a woman is valid and recognized in the state of California. <clears throat> the campaigns for and against uh, raised $39 uh, million and $43 million respectively, becoming the highest funded campaign of any state ballot uh, that day and surpassing every campaign in the country spending, uh, in spending except the presidential contest, as Sarah mentioned earlier. Uh, the margin was 4%. Uh, in addition, I can just to, just to put a little characterization on the campaign. All I can remember seeing on television was the Gavin Newsom ad where <laughs> Gavin oh, yeah. he was saying, you're going to get it whether you like it or not, you know, the mayor of, uh, the, of yeah. San Francisco. And I just saw lots of people all over on signs up and down the main drags, you know, holding up signs that says, uh, yes on A, preserve families, uh, protect our children. Essentially, it was the, uh, the, the slippery slope arguments we were talking about before that, uh, you know, once... In mass. In, in mass. In mass. And yeah, all, it was, all it was. It was everywhere. Like the slogan. Oh, yeah. Yep. Well, yep. like I, I said earlier, uh, the way that you win these election issues primarily is through fear-mongering. Mm -hmm. You have to scare people. Mm -hmm. Because people who aren't scared about something are content to just sit by. So if you want to rally them to one cause or another, you have to scare them into it. <clears throat> and Gavin Newsom did a wonderful job about scaring everyone. <laughs> because he just shot his mouth off. Mm -hmm. I personally don't like the guy. Mm -hmm. uh, there are others I'm sure that do. Uh, personally, I think he's doing a horrible job. And even advocating for his own position, he did it very poorly. Because he allowed it to be used against him and against his cause. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's a very, that's a very good analogy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just certain certain expressions sound zealous, and he sounds zealous, like uh, as if there was no compromising. Right. And that's right. Oh, Terry wants a question. Okay. Pop in, Terry. Um, Can you hear him from there? Here, make it quick, Terry, because <laughs> yeah, we're not okay. quite quite to the Q and A. Speak really loudly. Funding Someone passed the megaphone. Forty-five yeah. percent out of state from whatever Mormon. the Mormons. Fine. Thir Forty million was for the no campaign. How much percent was that from out of state? Do you know? I do not know. Okay. I've got a lot of I've got a lot of statistics, and none of them dealt with exactly where the money came from. Okay, but you, you know. A lot of yes money came, half the money roughly came from the Mormon church out of state, but the no funding, you know, at least a few dollars had to be out of state. Yeah, well, I'm sure it was. It was a lot of money. Right, but nobody and, knows the percentage. And anybody that opens their mail... critical, but I mean just... Yeah, anybody that opens their mail on a daily basis, and this happens to me a lot...